There are times as an artist where you have to throw all reason and common sense out of the window and just spend weeks painting a massive over the top painting of an 8 foot demon lady. For absolutely no reason. However, with a task as daunting as this one, we can't just blindly rush into the battle. No, like with every good painting or boss fight, there is something we need to do first. I've been sitting here staring at this painting for the past several hours, visualizing, simulating the process in my mind. Because there are so many parts to this painting where I really only have one shot and I either get them right from the very beginning or it's gonna be game over. Actually kind of fitting now that I think about it considering that I'm painting a video game boss. But because of that, going into this, I need a very clear strategy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I decided to divide the first layer of the painting into four different stages. First I have to get the face and the horns out of the way. They are by far the hardest part about this and the most amount of work and if I wait or if I start somewhere else, I will be completely burned out by the time I get to the face and then it will be super hard for me to pull off. Next I'm gonna paint all the shiny elements. All the jewelry, the metal, the armor. It's definitely one of the most important elements about this, so I gotta make sure that I get this right from the very beginning. Then I will paint the upper body, or at least the first layer of the upper body. And once I have the figure filled out, I will move on to the background. Which is going to be a complete challenge of its own, but we'll figure that one out when we get there. So this is a ton of work. It's gonna take forever. It's gonna look quite a bit unfinished and boring and ugly for a long time, so I better get started. I mean, I have to get started at some point. I can't just sit here and keep staring at the painting. tell you this was very complicated to paint and I'm super happy that I have this out of the way now it's still super unfinished but yeah now I can focus on everything else without having this hovering above my head like Damocles sword but that also means that now the real work begins I want to be 100% real with you. Painting this here feels incredible. It's exciting, it's challenging, it's ego boosting, it's pretty much everything an artist could hope for. But it also is probably a very dumb idea. Seriously, I would never recommend anyone to do what I am doing here. Usually you see me stoically do my thing here. And while that is true in most cases, with this painting here, I fully have to admit that right up until the moment I made the first brushstroke, I kept second guessing myself. And I was debating whether I should reconsider this after all until the very end. Because here's the thing. I don't get anything for doing this. The painting isn't the commission. I don't get any money for this. This video isn't sponsored by Blizzard or Diablo, although let's be real, it kinda should be. The YouTube ad revenue won't even cover the costs of the materials and even though I theoretically can sell the final painting, I'm not sure how big the market for giant demon ladies is out there. If it wasn't for the support of my patrons who always get some extra insights and behind the scenes stuff, I wouldn't even have entertained the idea of spending several weeks on a project like this especially with an almost guaranteed negative return on investment. Which begs the question, why even take the risk? Why venture into the unknown? Well, let's be real. Sometimes you paint for yourself, immersing yourself in the process and the journey. Sometimes you make something to make a living, but there are also times when you simply paint for glory. 
There's no deeper meaning to this painting here. I don't want to spread a message or change the world with a painting, nor do I get a medal for painting this. No, there are times when you just want to make a freaking cool painting that you can be proud of. Your own artistic achievement. Something so monumental, so complex and so far removed from your comfort zone that it forces you to level up and tap into the peak of your capabilities. Kind of like going Super Saiyan. It might sound a bit silly to use a Dragon Ball analogy here, but it's actually kind of fitting. Because you grow most when you find yourself in extraordinary situations that you're forced to overcome. This is just as much about making something awe-inspiring as it is about showcasing your skills and taking pride in your artistry. I'm no different from you. I'm not extraordinary or remarkable in any way. I'm actually pretty boring. But maybe, just maybe, I can create something remarkable that people will find inspiring. That's all it is. There is no harm in wanting to inspire others, to leave them in awe. Just like how a movie director or a musician or an author strives to create something unforgettable. Sometimes that's all an artist wants to do. No idea if the final painting will hold up, of course. It honestly might not. I genuinely have no idea at this point, but the thrill of finding out. That's what really keeps me going. Five minutes ago, I actually started to hear a little voice in the back of my head whispering Don't you actually hate this painting? Don't you think it's painted really badly? And I also managed to drop uh, the remote control of the camera into a bucket of oil, but yeah. Now, five minutes later, I actually kind of love the painting. Don't ask me how that's even possible. But now, I gotta cover the whole surface up before I make any other major decisions here. Because now it really depends on how the individual elements come together once I got everything covered up. That's what I'm gonna do and then I gotta decide on how I actually wanna finish the painting off. So, still some work to do here. You gotta love being an artist. One moment you feel like the king of the world and the other you question everything you've ever done. The creative process is rarely smooth sailing. There is always something and it's no different for me and also, no different for this painting. It's just that in the day and age of social media, you rarely get to see any of that. You only see the highlight reels. For example, if I didn't tell you that this is actually not the first giant demon lady painting, you would never know. After meticulously building the canvas for this painting and making the preliminary drawing and getting excited to paint, I decided to completely start over again because I wasn't 100% happy with the placement of my drawing. I felt like it was off by a few centimeters and while probably nobody on this planet would have ever noticed, I would have always known and it would have bugged me till the end of time. So the only logical conclusion was to completely start over. Luckily, I hadn't started painting yet, so it wasn't too much work, but it just goes to show you how passionate or, some would argue, obsessive artists can get. The jury is still out on whether this painting is one of the dumbest or most genius ideas I have had recently, but the funny thing is, even though I didn't intend to learn anything with this project, I learned more valuable lessons painting this one giant over-the-top painting here than I ever could have by just painting one regular painting after another. About the importance of planning, about increasing efficiency, about my own biases and my own habits and about what I personally actually like to do. This painting here showed me that I actually have this genuine desire for a challenge. 
a desire to create something much more complex or intricate or with multiple figures that can push my skills and my knowledge to a point I haven't before. It's not this painting here. In all honesty, the final painting here isn't really anything special. It's a ton of work and it takes a long time, but it's really only the spark that makes me want to go to a place I haven't before. As I mentioned, this painting is not sponsored or anything, so it begs the question, what am I going to do with it? Well, I guess it's up for grabs, but honestly, it would be kind of cool if it somehow managed to find a place in the gaming community, where I actually feel it belongs and where people can see it and maybe appreciate it. I'm not exactly sure how, but it would actually be kind of funny if instead of a gallery or a museum, it would casually sit amongst the chaos in the back of Asmund Gold's refugee or something. But yeah, making these kinds of videos is honestly so much fun. But it's also a ton of work and sometimes it's really hard to justify putting in all of this effort into one single video. So I really gotta give a shout out to my editor Anna here, who is just the best and always makes sure we are all entertained and not bored by these kinds of videos. So if you enjoyed watching this, do me a favor, leave a like and a comment down below. And also let me know how you like the painting. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Oh, and also make sure to share this video with a friend who appreciates giant hot demon ladies as much as you and I. And with that, my dear late night painters and midnight gamers, color mixers and button mashers, it's time for the end game. So let's wrap this up.